So let's have a look at core skills in Affinity Publisher. Now this is a quick reference guide based on the workbook for Affinity Publisher and I'll be stepping you through the core skills one by one. Before you start, the resources used in the workbook can be found by looking for Affinity Publisher resource files via your account. Now for Chapter 2, this is the address given there uh, publisher core skills, you need to log into your Affinity account when you connect to this link. So let's begin with the first skill, opening documents and templates. I might add that for this exercise you probably really don't need those, um, those resource files, but if you've got Affinity Publisher, you've got a login, you can go to that address there and download the relevant files to your Mac or PC. OK, opening Affinity Publisher files. The file name is type.afpub and you can open these files in Publisher, Photo or Designer. Select File, Open, locate the file and select it and click Open. That's all there is to opening a Publisher file. Migrate in Design Documents. Now this is really handy because you can pull in documents done in InDesign into um, Affinity Publisher, but certain types. In InDesign, if, you're, if you still have that program, choose File Export CS4 up to CS5 or File Save As CS6 or CC. This saves it in a particular format, so you format it for the Mac or Save As if you're on Windows in InDesign CS4 or later. Save it to an IDML type file. Click Save. Affinity Publisher only opens um, Adobe InDesign IDML documents. Now, working with templates. You can open in Affinity Designer any IDML format template that you find online. They're free or paid for, whichever you like. Templates are available from many sites on the internet. A Google search will return thousands. Some free, some good, some bad, some useless, and some you'll really enjoy. Make sure you check your licensing terms for whether templates are free for personal and commercial use before publishing anything based on them. Now another really useful feature is opening PDFs. Opening a PDF file creates a new Affinity Publisher document from it. Select File open, browse to and select the PDF. Click open. On the PDF dialog options, if the PDF contains more than one page, select load pages. Enter your choice of DPI and color space and check favor editable text over fidelity so you can update the document text. If you don't do that, you can't update the text in the PDF document. It comes in as an image. Check group lines of text into text frames to minimize the number of separate text frames created. If fonts in the PDF are missing, check replace missing fonts and choose a replacement family or note the fonts, cancel the document and install them first, then reopen the PDF file. That's the way I like to do it. That way Missing fonts stay on your system and they don't get in the way much. Now, Affinity Publisher, Pages and Master Pages. Pages are the fundamental building blocks of Affinity Publisher documents. Each document can contain multiple pages of various sizes. There are two types, Publication Pages and Master Pages. Now I won't read through this line by line because you'll go crazy listening to my voice. Except to note a few, a few things like modifications to a master page appear instantly and automatically on all pages to which it's been applied. Pages can be presented as individual paces, pages or two facing pages and that's it when you first open. The publication pages are the ones you'll export. Master pages control the contents of a page. 
but master pages are not absolutely necessary. Master pages are in the upper window, publication pages in the lower window. Creating documents, another core skill. Your choice in this area affects colour, measurement units, dots per inch and many other settings which you can see on the right hand side there. Now depending on what you're doing, if you're always working with one type of document you tend to always gravitate to the same one and in fact you can create your own variation of any of those presets that are there and add them to my presets which is another exercise in itself but if you put them in my presets for instance you might always be creating the same school newsletter you don't want to be looking through this all the time setting up the uh, measurements and the color just do it once as a custom preset give it a name put it in my presets now create a document for a print publication Select New on the Documents dialog, New Documents, press Presets on the left, then Press Ready near the top left. And you can see I've got Press Ready there. Select the A4 preset. Now there's none showing there at the moment and I did that on purpose. Once you click, click Create, the first page is central on the Document View and you can scroll to reach others. After creating a document, its color profile, units, bleed and other settings can be amended in File, Document Setup. A page's dimensions can be altered in File, Spread Setup. That's handy to know because if once you've created your document, if you have to alter it, that's how you do it. Document Setup and Spread Setup. Now, a document's number of pages is not fixed at the time of its creation. More can be added at any time. And to do that you can either click Add Pages with the Pages panel lower window and you can see I'm pointing an arrow to it. Or you can use Next Spread in the status bar. Set the number of pages to add. When you're done, click OK. Duplicating pages, another simple one, select one or more publication pages, click duplicate selected pages near the top of the pane's lower window. That's just below master pages. Similar functions apply to master pages. Viewing and editing pages. The page or spread you are editing is identified by its page numbers on the page navigation bar at the left window and by a grey highlight around its thumbnail on the pages panel. And you can see the grey highlight around there as well as the misspellings in this slide. You can rearrange pages, select one or more pages, drag the select, selected pages to the place you want them to, to appear. When a vertical blue line appears, drop the pages to move to that position. And you can see I've moved pages 2 and 3 from where they were before 4, 5, 6, so they're now in between 6 and 7. Master Pages Master pages are managed in the upper window of the Pages panel. They're often used to add headers, footers and other recurring objects to multiple publication pages such as page numbering, on-page objects and guides. Now be aware that anything you put on a master page will appear in publication pages below that are mapped to that master page and will overwrite whatever's in your publication page. So be careful of that one. Now we've had a look at master pages. 
Let's have a look at adding a blank master page. Our documents can contain multiple master pages and on the front pages panel click add master above the master pages window. You'll see the little tiny square there. Name the master and select whether it's a single page or a facing page spread. The document view switches to the new master page ready to add elements. Now add page numbers and section details as a footer. Draw a text frame in the bottom left of your new master's left page. Put the insertion point in the text frame and select text insert fields page number. Type a space, a vertical bar and another space. Select text insert fields section name. Copy the text frame to the master's right page. Right align the copy's contents and use cut and paste to reverse the information so that the page number is nearest the page's outer edge. Hmm, another spelling mistake. Never mind. Apply a master page. To apply a master page to a publication page, you can either drag the master's thumbnail from the upper window to the pages panel and drop it onto the publication page in the lower window. If dropping onto a spread, drop onto the centre to apply to both sides or drop onto the verso or recto page to apply only to that side. Alternatively, to quickly apply a master, odd, even or a range of pages without selecting each one's thumbnail, control click or right click a publication page and choose apply master. Select the master from the Apply Master pop-up menu. Specify the pages to which the master should be applied. Uncheck the Replace Existing box if you want to apply multiple masters. Click OK. Make local changes. The contents of text and picture frames inherited from a master page can always be populated with new content on any page where the master is applied. Such changes are local to that page and do not edit the master or other pages. Local change options. Now, Detached enables adjusting inherited elements without amending the master and affecting other pages to which it is applied. If you're going to edit the page, you can use Linked. Enables editing the master's elements on the page that inherits them. Changes are made to the master and to other pages linked to it. Be careful with that one. Content. This is the default mode, allowing only the contents of inherited sets and picture frames to be edited, but not other object attributes. And lock. Same as locking the master layer on the layers panel, and prevents accidental dragging. Removing a master from a page. Control click or right click the page's thumbnail. Select clear masters. Applying one master page to another. Master pages can be applied to other masters. For example, Master A might contain a footer with page numbers. Master B contains a coloured bar down its left edge to represent a publication page's section in a publication. Now, the section Design Aids. Understanding the design aids available in Affinity Publisher enables you to work with absolute precision, yet more easily too. We'll look at snapping, column and ruler guides for visually aligning objects and baseline grids for making... I suppose that's supposed to be them. Making them look neater. These features can be enabled or disabled at will at any time. Now, design aids. Understanding the design aids available in Affinity Publisher enables you to work with absolute precision, yet more easily too. 
we'll look at snapping, column and ruler guides for visually aligning objects and baseline grids for making text look neater. These features can be enabled or disabled at will at any time. Snapping. That's right at the top of your toolbar. Snapping helps you to align objects with each other and with the baseline grids and guides described over the next few slides. It's turned on by default and its behaviour can be adapted or entirely disabled to suit your needs. Click snapping on the toolbar to toggle it on or off. And you can see the various options that you have if you do that. Choose snapping behaviour. Click the snapping button's adjacent arrow to choose from snapping to baseline grids and guides, page margins and midpoints, other objects, bounding boxes, key points with objects and much more. To help with a variety of page layout tasks, choose a built-in behaviour from the preset pop-up menu or click the adjacent preferences icon to save your personal choices via a menu. Now, baseline grids, very useful. A document-wide baseline grid is a set of horizontal rule lines that applies to all of a document's pages. Once it's been set up in text frame, shapes and tables, snaps to the lines automatically. The baseline grid is often based on the size and leading of body copy though it applies to other text styles as well. A key purpose of the baseline grid is to ensure that, for example, a subheading of a different size in one column or text frame does not push the baseline of subsequent text out of alignment. Instead, alignment is maintained for neater overall look. And it's very handy if you're doing comics to have that baseline grid because the text in comics is usually in bubbles or next to bubbles but still needs to have that overall alignment for it to look really good. Setting up a baseline grid, again at the top of your toolbar, the baseline grid is applied to all pages. Click Show Baseline Grid on the toolbar. Check the Use Baseline Grid box. From the Relative to Pop-up menu, select Top Margin. Lines will appear above that point, but the origin of the grid is whatever value you enter next to Start Position. Next to Grid Spacing, set the distance between each pair of grid lines. Optionally, specify the colour and opacity of the grid lines. The baseline grid need not be visible at all times. On the baseline grid document dialog, check show baseline grids. Set display threshold to 50%. The grid will appear only at this level of closure. Click close. While zoomed in to at least the display threshold, so you might have a 50% zoom and that's when your baseline grid will display. Toggle the baseline's grid visibility by choosing View Show Baseline Grid. Text and tables can have their own baseline grid settings independent of the document-wide baseline grid. Apply an object specific baseline by following these steps. Select the text frame or table. Choose text frame or table as appropriate. Overriding the baseline grid, elements can ignore the document-wide baseline grid without applying their own. Select the element on the page, choose text frame or table as appropriate. 
on the panel's general selection check ignore baseline grid. Guides help you to position and resize objects on pages with precision and to follow principles of good design in your page layouts. They are purely a visual and practical aid and are excluded when you print or export a document. Now look at the Guides Manager. Column and Ruler Guides can be configured in View Guides Manager. Additionally, Ruler Guides can be added directly from the rulers. And that's your Guide Manager showing there. Column Guides are used to divide a page into columns and rows. They steer your pages towards balanced design. Each page or spread of your document has its own column guide settings. Column guides are overlaid on pages in a semi-transparent non-printing overlay. Their style and colour are customisable. The gutter width, which is the gap between columns, is applied uniformly between each pair of columns. Ruler guides can be added wherever they are needed simply by dragging from a ruler and onto the page. This is the more intuitive method. Column and ruler guides are commonly added to master pages. Ruler guides inherited from a master are displayed as dashed lines rather than solid ones. Ruler guides can be added directly to pages. Choose View, Show Rulers. Drag from either the horizontal or vertical ruler and drop it in position on the page. Ruler guides can be created at an exact numerical position or if they already exist, have their position fine-tuned. Choose View, Guides Manager. In either list, double-click a guide's position to edit it. Type the exact position required. Object Control Affinity Publisher provides a consistent set of controls for manipulating objects, meaning selectable elements on pages. Text frames, picture frames, tables, shapes and artistic text. Using the Move tool, click an object to select it. A bounding box is displayed around the object, with handles at the corners and at the centre of each edge. When resizing an object, the opposite corner is the anchor point. So hold the command key on a Mac or control key on Windows to resize about its centre. Resizing an object, drag any of an object's handles to increase or decrease the object's size. Most objects are able to be distorted as you scale them. Hold the shift key while resizing to maintain an object's proportions or aspect ratio. The exceptions are artistic text and unframed pictures which maintain their aspect ratio when scaled. In these cases, hold the shift key to allow them to distort so it's the opposite of an object's handles. Resizing text frames. Dragging a text frame's corner or edge handle scales the frame itself and its column widths, but maintains its text size and gutter width. Text frames have an additional handle hanging outside their bottom right corner. This scales the entire frame proportionally, its overall dimensions, internal structures and text size. Repositioning an object. With the Move tool selected, drag from within the object's bounding box to move it on the page. You're probably already familiar with that one. Duplicate an object. With the Move tool selected, that is, the bounding boxes around it, hold the Command or Control key and drag an object to create a duplicate at the position where you drop the new object. The original object is unaltered. A quick way of making copies. Rotate an object. 
Drag left or right from the lollipop-like rotation handle that hands outside the top edge of an object. The object will rota rotate around its center. Hold the shift key while dragging the handle to rotate in 15 degree increments. Double click the rotation handle to reset the object's rotation to zero. So if you make a mistake, double click that little circle and the object will go back to its original position. Now, precisely precision, reposition, resize or rotate an object. Select an object, then type in the transform panel's X and Y fields to reposition it. The W and H fields to resize it, or the R and S fields to rotate and shear, or skew it. The fields can calculate new values based on the object's current attributes. Now, arranging objects. Every object on the current page is listed on the Layers panel. Layer order from top to bottom on the panel corresponds to object positions from front to back on the page. So the topmost object is the frontmost object on the page. Other objects may be hiding behind it. They'll be lower on the layer panel. To change an object's position in the layer stack, do one of the following. Select it and use the arrange buttons on the toolbar to bring it forward or move it back a layer at a time. all the way in an instant. Use the equivalent keyboard shortcuts listed in Layer Arrange. Inserting new objects. A newly drawn object's position in the layer stack depends on what is selected in Layer Insertion or which button, if any, in the toolbar's insertion group is selected in the examples below. The triangle is at the newly drawn object. Working with text. New section. Text is a crucial component of almost every publication. Affinity Publisher offers several ways to use it, which are explained here. They will be familiar if you have used other Affinity apps. The Affinity Publisher's Frame Text tool has extra capabilities specifically suited to page layout. Frame text. This is the most commonly used type of text in Affinity Publisher. It can be used for anything from a single sentence caption to multi-paragraph body copy. Using the frame text tool, drag across a page to create a new text frame in that area. Choose Text Insert Filler Text to fill the frame with placeholder text. By default, the line length of text runs to the frame's full width and height. A text frame can display its contents across multiple columns, with adjustable gutter widths between them. This is important to many types of publication, from posters to magazines to books. And the detail for setting up a text frame is there. That's a good example if you wanted to use it. Asymmetric text frames where column widths can be different. Column widths are initially the same but can be adjusted individually. Click the width icon to reset all to the same value. By default, changing one gutter's width changes all others to match. You may struggle to get this right in the first place, but it is very useful. Dealing with overset text. With the frame selected, its triangular text flow buttons turn red as a reminder that there is overset text hidden from view. And you can see the little red triangle down the bottom right hand side. When text overflows its frame, red handles on the frame's edge warn you about it, even when the frame is deselected. 
Click the text flow button's adjacent eye icon to display the overset text for review. Click it again to hide the text. Text frames can be linked so that overset text from one frame spills into subsequent frames in the sequence automatically. Later frames can be on the same page or different pages. Frames can be linked when created or retrospectively. Managing linked frame order, text frames can be inserted into or deleted from the middle of a sequence. Inserting a new text frame reflows text from that point onwards. And of course in red, beware of moving a page that contains frames that belong to a linked sequence because this does not alter the order in which frames are linked added so your text may become out of order. Managing linked frame order. Text frames can be inserted into or deleted from the middle of a sequence. Inserting a new text frame reflows text from that point onwards. Auto flow text. With one click the text flow button can create as many new pages and link text frames as are needed to present all your text. This saves time with publications that follow a repeating format such as books and reports. It can be done one page at a time or for as many pages as are needed to display all of your text. Auto flow all at once. Hold the shift key and click the frames text flow button to instantly create as many pages and text frames, all of the same size, as are needed to display all of the oversized text. If a document contains facing pages and the initial frame is asymmetrically positioned, the new frame's position is mirrored across the spread. Other kinds of text. Artistic text. Use the artistic text tool to create prominent or decorative typography such as headlines. Artistic text resizes to always fill its container. Path text. Text can run along a curve, closed shape or geometric shape. Select a suitable object. Shape text. As well as rectangular text frames, text can flow within shapes drawn using the shape tool or pen tools. Like frame text, shape text can be divided into columns and have inserts applied to endure. As well as rectangular text frames, text can flow within shapes drawn using the shape tools or pen tools. Like frame text, shape text can be divided into columns and have insets applied to ensure it doesn't touch the shape's outline. Hand drawn shapes as text frames. Closed shapes drawn using the pen tool can contain shape text. Picture frames. Picture frames are placeholders into which you can insert images, PDFs and Affinity documents. Affinity Publisher includes tools for creating rectangular and elliptical picture frames. Intersecting diagonal lines through an empty picture frame center distinguish it from a plain shape. Use shapes as picture frames.
to create a picture frame. Close shapes drawn using the pen tool and compounds created from multiple objects using the commands in layered geometry can be converted into picture frames. Compound picture frames. Again, close shapes drawn using the pen tool and compounds created from multiple objects using the commands in layered geometry. Wrap text around pictures, a very useful feature. The flow of words in a text frame is, by default, unaffected by another element overlapping the frame. Sometimes you'll want this. When you don't, Affinity Publisher provides several behaviours for how text flows around an element. Text can wrap around picture frames, shapes, tables and even other text objects. The effects of image transparency on text wrapping. Text may not immediately wrap as shown in the text wrap, wraps dialogues examples. It will wrap to the rectangular bounding box of another picture frame, artistic text or another text frame, even if a picture has an alpha channel which specifies which pixels are transparent or opaque. Fine tune a text wrap. The more flexible method of wrapping text around a non rectangular shape can be applied to images without an alpha channel and in picture frames. However, it may involve extra effort depending on the image's edge. Wrapping override. When an object's text wrap settings cause unwanted wrapping to a text frame placed on top of it, for example, you can override the wrapping. Adding content. As well as creating content directly on pages using Affinity Publisher's built-in tools, content can be imported from a variety of text, raster and vector image files. Files can be of different formats including PNG, TIFF, JPEG, SVG, layered Photoshop, PDF, Microsoft Excel and Affinity Documents. Some examples of placing images or text or PDF files or even multiple images. Drag and drop images. Intelligent auto scaling options. When you place an image in a picture frame, the scale to max fit option is applied. This is one of several scaling behaviours and the app can perform instantly. But there are others. Manual positioning and scaling. When a populated picture frame is selected, additional controls appear when the cursor is over it and you can use this to adjust the picture in that frame. Multi-page documents such as PDF. 
and layered documents. Check resource statuses. You can choose how images and documents are used in Affinity Designer documents and stored internally in the document or externally in a sidecar folder. Check the status of resources. You can choose how images and documents used in an Affinity Publisher document are stored internally in the document or externally in a sidecar folder. Read this carefully. It does have implications for documents that have a lot of images in them. Changing a resource between linked and embedded has the instructions quite simply for that. Auto updating linked resources. Affinity Publisher can be configured to auto-update linked resources as they are modified without manual action on your part. So if you actually modify an image that's linked to your document, it will be automatically updated in the document. Importing text. And there's a whole list of files that a publisher can import text from, most notably Word, RTF and text files. Text styles. Text styles specify how text should look, which typeface is used, at what size, how it's aligned and much more. Each set style has a unique name such as Heading 1, Heading 2 and Body Text and you're probably familiar with a lot of these already. Applying text styles. Applying text style. Either style type can be applied from the context toolbar. As the cursor moves down the character style or paragraph style menu, the style under it is previewed. Text styles can inherit settings from other text styles. When you edit a style, its subordinate styles are updated automatically. Group styles. A third style type is available. Group styles. These are used as the foundation of multiple styles. Subordinate styles will inherit a group's settings but can selectively override them. For example, changing text color or weight to ensure legibility against particular backgrounds. Designing using temporary text. Placeholder text can be used to design pages when meaningful text is unavailable or so that real words don't distract from a mock-up's appearance. Fill a text repeats until it literally fills its text frame or a linked sequence of them. And we touched on this earlier on. Accessing glyphs and special characters. This is something you will come across from time to time. Glyphs are the characters available in a font, letters, numbers, symbols and other special characters. Choose View Studio Glyph Browser to access many more characters than are labelled on your keyboard. 
Glyphs are the characters available in a font. Letters, numbers, symbols and other special characters. Choose View Studio Glyph Browser to access many more characters than are labelled on your keyboard. For an example, use stylized quotation marks around the pull quote in the page resource by following these steps. And you can see just on the right hand side there, there's a rather large quotation mark beginning that extract. Previewing your work. The various types of guide, the baseline grid and other visual design aids displayed over your document can get in the way at times. Select Toggle Preview Mode on the toolbar for a clear view of your document's contents. Additionally, choose View Toggle UI to hide, to hide Affinity Publishers various toolbars and panels. Previewing your work. The various types of guides, the baseline grid and other visual design aids displayed over your document can get in the way at times. Select Toggle Preview Mode on the toolbar for a clear view of your document's contents. Additionally, choose View Toggle UI to hide Affinity Publishers, various toolbars and panels. So thanks for watching and making it all the way to the end. With these core skills, you can now face any project with confidence.